Hello! My name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matok Lasad. In statistics, an outlier is a data point that differs significantly from other observations. An outlier may be due to variability in the measurement, and sometimes the outlier is excluded from the data set if it is an experimental error because it can cause serious problems in statistical analysis. A standard score or z-score tells how many standard deviations a data value is above or below the mean for a specific distribution of values. The z-scores can quantify the unusualness of an observation when your data follow the normal distribution. So, we can use it to identify outliers. The formula for the z-score is just equal to the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. For samples, we use x to represent each value in the data set, x bar for the sample mean, and s for the standard deviation of the sample. For populations, it's just the same. We just need to change the symbols for the mean, which is now mu for the population, and sigma for the population standard deviation. Okay, let's say we have a normal distribution in this figure. And if the z or the z-score is equal to 0, its location is at the center because it's equal to the mean of the data set. Now, if the value of the z-score is greater than 0, it's on the right side of the normal distribution. And if it's less than 0, then the position of the z-score is on the left side of the normal distribution. As a general rule, a z-score is considered an outlier if it is less than negative 3 or greater than positive 3. Because if you have values greater than positive 3, it's on the extreme part of the right side of the normal distribution. While if it's less than negative 3, it's on the leftmost part of the normal distribution. For example, a sample survey of daily travel time had these results below in minutes. The mean is 42 minutes and the standard deviation is 7.3 minutes. Using these scores, are there any outliers in the data set? Now, to get the z-score of the first value, which is 45, we just need to use the formula. Okay, I'm gonna write z45 here. Then the first value is 45, which is x minus x bar, which in this case is 42 minutes, divided by the standard deviation, which is 7.3. Now, using your calculator, in two decimal places, the z-score is 0 0.41. So, you just need to write it here. For the second one, which is 44, all we need to do is to subtract 44 and 42 divided by 7.3. <laughs> so the answer here in two decimal places is 0 0.27. Now, by doing this process repeatedly on these cells, we will have these values. To identify the outlier, all we need to do is to identify z-scores less than negative 3 and z-scores greater than positive 3. Are there any numbers less than negative 3? We don't have one. How about numbers greater than positive 3? We also don't have a number greater than positive 3. So we can now say that these data values using z-scores has no outliers. Also notice that 42 has a z-score of 0. That's because 42 is equal to our sample mean which is 42 minutes. Now at a glance, 61 may seem high compared to the other values in the data set. So it has a z-score of 2.6. But in terms of z-scores, it's not an outlier because the z-score did not exceed 3.0. So should we just drop our case and uh, we will consider 61 in the data set? Well, z-scores is only one of the ways to identify outliers and it has some weaknesses too. 
Note that Z-scores can be misleading with small datasets because the maximum Z-score is just limited to n minus 1 over square root of n. So in our case, since we have 15 sample size, minus 1 divided by square root of 15, the answer is 3.61. Well, in this case, the maximum possible value is 3.61, so it's really possible to have a value greater than 3.0 or 3. So it's just okay in our case. But if your sample size is 10 or fewer, it cannot have z-scores that exceed a cutoff value of positive or negative 3. So we cannot use this z-score for identifying outliers if you have 10 samples and below. Also remember that outliers' presence throws off the z-scores because it inflates the mean and the standard deviation. So if you are using the sample mean and you got it from a data set having an outlier, it could throw off the z-scores of each data set. And if that's the case, we need to use other methods for identifying outliers. And that's all for this video. If you want more video tutorial and statistics, you can always check my playlist in the description down below. Please like, share, and subscribe for more updates. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.